and ask for the team. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to know. You, you got this scene with the Gentiles and the Jews, and we know that the apostles are arguing over the Gentiles with, with these Jews. They're wanting to know what to do with them. They decide to go ahead, at least James does, and he basically just gives him four commands. And and one of the four is, you know, has something to do with us. And what it says in verse 20 is, for them to abstain from things polluted by idols. Now, verse 29 makes it a lot more clear. It just says, to abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled. That's about it. You know, um, my question is, if the dietary law of the old covenant, Leviticus 11 and all of its grandeur and glory has to be kept, why did the Pharisees, or not Pharisees, goodness, <laughs> why did, did the apostles um, end up not not just saying, hey, you know, keep the food laws of Leviticus. Like, why didn't they just come out and say it? And instead, they just said, look, just make sure that you are saying from meat sacrifice to idols. Like, why didn't they just say, keep the kosher food laws? The whole kit and caboodle. That's what I want to know. Okay. That was their perfect opportunity to, to do that. But okay. They didn't do it. Yeah. Well, uh, again, the, the book is written to things that are common knowledge. So it's common knowledge. So I, I want you to look at it from this angle. Everybody knows that you eat clean. I, I just, just entertain this for a second. Everybody knows that you eat that you eat clean. So let's see what he said to them. I want to go back up to the verse that you brought up. Uh, you said that they abstain, uh, but we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, fornications, from things strangling, from blood. Verse 21 is very clear. In other words, let's receive these brothers. Let's not put a requirement that they have to be circumcised before you teach them. Why? Because let's just receive them uh, with the understanding that they cannot be celebrating other idols. They can't be doing fornication and things strangled because you have to, number one, believe in God before we can teach you the Most High. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. This clearly indicates to me, let's receive them because they will learn in the synagogue when Moses is being read. When it says mean Moses, it's the word of God. Uh, verse 29, it says um, that they abstain from meats offered to idols. There's one passage in the scriptures that the apostle says that when you go into the shambles and if you sit down and somebody bids you to come to a a meal, sit down asking nothing. Whatever's set before you eat, asking nothing. Well, that is simply meaning that I'm not going to eat something that is pork. And if you read further down in that same passage, he's talking about things that were offered to idols is is if you take a lamb and you sacrifice this lamb to an idol you can't eat that lamb because that lamb was offered to an idol if somebody sits down and says here's a calf uh if you if they don't tell you go and eat it but at the moment they tell you that that was used for an idol you don't do it so that's what he's saying here that you abstain from meats Offered to idols and right, from blood. The part, right, but where's the part where it says, like, you know, just the whole food laws in general? Because, again, if you even were to read verse 28 and 29, it literally says, For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements, these commandments. So, so they put a cap on it, which, which kind of goes against your way that you do your verse verse chapter verse 20 where he says hey they're going to be learning the rest of it in the synagogues anyway and even if you look at that that's only talking about the jews who gather and learn from 
from Moses. You know, it'd be kind of odd if, if the apostles really, you know, push them into the synagogues to learn, you know, Moses' laws when 2 Corinthians 3 says that when Moses is read, it's no different than having a veil over their face. But Christ takes away that veil when you enter Christ. So it kind of, it works against that narrative, plus the whole cap thing with, you know, Acts 15 verse 28. You know, it doesn't sound like like a start out with this and then it gets bigger. So what do you do with verse 28 that just puts a cap on it? It just says, hey, just avoid meat to sacrifice idols. Don't worry about any other thing beyond that, which would be the food laws. You know, so how do you how do you like deal with with what the apostles are clearly saying to the churches? Okay, so again, the whole subject is that they were receiving brothers before they were circumcised. And what the apostle says, there was evidence from Peter, Paul, and Barnabas that we had not even circumcised these brothers, but we went to them and they received understanding. This is what happened to Cornelius. Cornelius was sent to Peter. Peter taught him. So the evidence is we didn't bother them about being circumcised at this point. We taught them and they received Christ. So what he's saying here again, the whole subject is, he said in verse 29, uh, 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost to and to us, based upon the evidence that they had just heard from Peter, Paul, and Barnabas, to lay upon you no greater burden no than these. Greater burden than these things necessary, than these necessary things. In other words, before we teach you, we want to make sure that you don't deal with idolatry. You don't deal with fornication. That's all he's saying. He's not saying... But I, th I think the part is when you say before we teach you, as if before we teach you further, you know, and again, I'm asking where in the chapter or in any of the New Testament is there anyone talking like that? Hey, like this is just a preview right now and we're going to give you some more to introduction law later. Like where is that at? Because so far in verse 28, it's not there. You know, it just says we're, we're going to lay on you no greater burden than this. Like that's it. You know, so that's all I was asking. Like I hear what you're saying. I'm asking like where is that theme like taught in scripture even if it's not acts 15 it could be anywhere okay you know, where, like where is that at okay so we do know that when paul and those guys were teaching the jews the scripture says and the gentiles came they heard something and they said can you come teach us and the scripture says, and the next three Sabbaths, they went and taught the Gentiles. So the Gentiles does not know what the Hebrews knew, the children of Israel knew. The apostles were Hebrews. Even Paul said, I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. So they didn't know it like they knew it. So what are they there to do? They're there teaching and showing. So why did they, they went the next three Sabbaths teaching these people even today brother surreal everybody don't know any everything but one thing i'm going to do is i'm not going to teach an atheist uh, about anything about the resurrection until he number one starts to believe in god if you believe in god then i will teach you brother atheist but if you don't believe in god why should i teach you about the resurrection why should i teach you about a kingdom to come i'm not because you have not met the bare re uh, uh, requirements believe in god don't put no other gods before him and if you don't do that i'm not going to even waste my time with you Right. So, so even then, when Paul had spoke to them for all those Sabbaths, was it not the gospel? I don't understand when you say, why is this not the gospel? No, I said when, when Paul spoke to those Gentiles for all those Sabbaths and, and all, everybody else, was, it, what, was he not preaching the gospel? Absolutely. Paul was teaching Jesus, brother. Paul was right, teaching so that Jesus... It has come to uh, atone your sins. And here's right. what sin is. If you break these commandments, this is sin. But don't worry. We have a Messiah 
that has come according to Isaiah 53rd chapter. And if you believe in him, if you believe in him and him only, then what you can receive is as atonement for your sins. We want right. you to be so, baptized in him. We want you to take on that covenant that you will abide by his laws, statutes, and judgments. And if you sin out of ignorance, you have an atonement for sins. But see, that, that that's the part that I'm asking. Like when, when you end up talking about the gospel, where in the New Testament can we read where Paul is teaching that part? as a part of the gospel, that part about, you know, keeping his commandments, statutes, and laws, because, you know, we can go to places where, you know, Peter, Paul, John, and everybody else, they give their own commandments, and even Paul, he says, hey, this is not I, but the Lord's command, and it's not Mosaic, you know, it's, it's, it's actual command, so when he's preaching the gospel, where is he preaching that part about keeping the law, statutes, commandments, kosher food? So, like, is that anywhere in the New Testament? Can can we find it like somewhere? Um, but if not, then I guess my final question was: If I continue to well, eat, pork, well, can I go and show you? Yeah, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. so let's go to Second Timothy. Yeah, 